Hi, Sinocap here. Today, I'm going to explain a 2014 Australian science fiction, action thriller film, called Predestination. The movie begins with a man in a trench coat, trying to defuse a bomb in a public building, in New York. Someone attacks him with gun. He almost defuses the bomb, but is burned severely. The attacker tries to take his suitcase, but walks away after watching him. He wakes up in a hospital, with his face, and arms, covered in bandages. He is working for an agency, who is trying to stop a bomber called, the Fizzle Bomber. They tell him, that he is to go on a final mission, before being retired. A voiceover narrates that this was only a small attack. His grand plan is to attack New York, which is going to level 10 blocks. He keeps changing the time. His doctor tells him, that he is healed, but he will look different, and sound different. He is diagnosed with early psychosis, and depression. After getting fully recovered, he is being sent to his final mission. The scene shifts to him being a bartender. The date is 6th November, 1970. A man enters, and orders some whiskey. They start talking. He tells him that he writes confession stories, under the pen name, The Unmarried Mother. The bartender tells her that he reads his work. The bartender tells him that he got a real insight into the feminine mind, and asks him how, if he's got sisters or if he's married? The man says that he wouldn't believe him, if he told. The man tells him that he bets the full bottle, that he will tell the best story he's ever heard. So, the man says he'll start at the beginning. The man tells him that once he was a little girl, which surprises the bartender. He starts his story. September 13, 1945, the man, girl at the time, was left on an orphanage doorstep. The doctor examines her and tells that she is healthy. They name her, Jane. She was never sick, so she was never taken to a hospital. She always wondered, why her parents abandoned her. Sex felt confusing to her, because she felt different. She made a solemn vow, that her kid would have both a mom and a dad. She learned how to fight. She was stronger than any other kid, even the boys. And she was smart, top of the class. When she got older, she realized she won't get married, for the same reason she never got adopted. She stopped looking in the mirror. She has no photos of herself. One day, a man, Mr. Robertson comes in the orphanage. He tells Jane, he works for an organization, who train young girls for governmental services. He wants to recruit her for Space Corp. The suits figured that they can't send men into space for months, without relieving the tension. So, they were looking for virgins, to train them from scratch. Her interview is held with a panel of men. They made sure she didn't get pregnant during enlistment. They were expected to be married by the end of the hitch. Her training starts, they give her contact lenses. They test for endurance, making sure they were fit for space travel. The testing goes on for months, as they test for everything. She gets in a fight with a girl. The organization performs a detailed examination, and the doctor says, this will disqualify her. Robertson visits her and tells her that he will appeal to the board, to get her re-enlisted. She started working as a mother's helper, to sustain herself. That's when she discovered confession stories. She worked during day, and went to school at night. One day, she walks into someone. He was rich, handsome, and told her he'd take care of her. In the present day, a news shows police preparing for a large-scale attack by the fizzle bomber. He continues the story. She fell in love with him. One night, he sat her down, and told her to wait for a moment. He never came back. She carries on with her life, when, one day Mr. Robertson returns. He tells her the truth. His organization's primary purpose is not space travel. Space Corp is just a recruitment agency. They recruit people with no families, no ties to past or future. But she got pregnant with the mystery man. So, she never saw Robertson again. She goes into labor. Doctor tells her, she gave birth to a healthy girl. The doctor tells her that her internal setup, is different than most. Doctor tells her, she has two sets of full organs, both male and female. The female set developed enough to have a baby. But due to excess bleeding, they had to remove her ovaries and uterus. Further surgeries will be required, but she will now become a man. She names her child, Jane, because she'll have to change hers. Two weeks later, someone kidnaps the baby. She never found the baby. Eleven months and three major operations later, she becomes a man. Present day, he tells bartender that doctors told him, he is a fully fertile man now. But he is no longer a woman, and he doesn't know how to be a man. He continues the story, he tries to re-enlist in Space Corporation this time, to become an astronaut. He was marked unfit for training. He changes his name, and goes to New York. Got a job as a fry cook. He bought a typewriter and became a public stenographer. He bought a stack and confession magazines and studied them, 
and the unmarried mother was born. That's how he understands the feminine mind, through the only story he hasn't sold. He asks if he won the bottle, to which bartender says, not bad, and hands her the bottle. The bartender asks what if he can put the man who ruined her life, in front of her and guarantee that he can get away with killing him. He says he would kill him in a heartbeat. Bartender says he knows where he is. He reveals a name, Beth Featheridge, the caretaker of Jane at the orphanage. Bartender reveals that he told him his woman name, Jane, but not his man name, which bartender says is John. John says then tell me where he is. Bartender says he'll have to do something for him. He says, he'll hand over the man to him, and he do whatever he likes. Once he's done, he'll try bartender's job, and if he doesn't like it, he walks away. John asks what the job is. Bartender says that Robertson will explain it better than him. Bartender takes his case out, the same case from the opening of the movie, and tells him, it's a time machine. He takes him to the past, April 3, 1963. He tells him that Robertson works for the Temporal Bureau, and is currently in 1985. He is an agent, who prevent crimes before they take place. John asks how far can they travel. He says 53 years from zero point, in either direction. Zero point is the invention of time travel, which is in 1981, John visits the spot where Jane met the man, in order to kill him. Jane bumps into John. They have the same conversation that Jane had with the man. Turns out, John was the mystery man all along. Bartender is watching from a distance. Bartender travels to 1967, to stop the fizzle bomber. He sees someone and shoots at him. They engage in a fight. The bomber overpowers him and leaves. He hears gunshots from distance. He sees a man, being burned alive, the same man from opening of the movie. Realizing that it's him, he hands him the case and walks away. Burning Man travels to 1992, Bartender travels to 1964. Meanwhile, John and Jane are talking to each other over coffee. Robertson visits Bartender. Robertson says that he made an illegal jump, which is a serious offense. The onset of psychosis and dementia can be serious. Bartender says he'll accept the punishment. Robertson says the constraints of Bureau are important, but he's always felt that they can achieve so much more, without these constraints. He says that bartender is a gift, given to the world through a predestination paradox. It is then revealed that, Jane, John, the mysterious man, and the bartender, they are all the same person. He impregnated himself to be born, thus becoming his own father, mother, and son. His face and voice changed, due to the burns he suffered at the start of the movie. Jane and John kiss each other, continuing the cycle. Bartender was the one who kidnapped the kid, took him to 1945, and left him in the orphanage to complete the cycle. After, he travels back to 1963, the day the man left Jane. John sees him, and tells Jane he'll be back in a moment. John tells Bartender that he is not going to leave her. Bartender tells him that he knows who he is, and he knows who Jane is, now he needs to understand who the bartender is. He tells John that the path he is on will take him to his destination. They travel to Bureau. Robertson tells Bartender that when he reaches his final destination, his time machine will decommission. He is going to retire in New York, close to the date of the blast. Bartender travels to 1975, New York. He decommissions his time machine, but it shows a fail error. He checks his file, which shows a message from Robertson to trace the timer purchase, in order to trace the bomber. John becomes an agent of the Bureau. Bartender keeps obsessing over the bomber. He traces the bomber to a laundromat. It is then revealed, that Fizzle Bomber is none other than older version of himself. Bomber kills and bombs people to save even more lives than he kills. He shows him clippings from the future that never happened. He killed a tanker, to save 350 people. 1991 bombing to save 1861 people. 1968, he blew up a building where terrorists were going to kill 3,027 people. Bartender says his next attack is going to kill 10,000 people. Bomber says that when the dust settles, he'll see the truth. Bartender says he'll never become the bomber to which Bomber asks, if he reported that his time machine didn't decommission to the Bureau. Bomber implies that Robertson knew everything, and he deliberately left the time machine decommissioned. Robertson laid out the dominoes, and they are just watching it fall. Bomber says to Bartender, if you shoot me, you'll become me. That's how it happens. In order to break the chain, he needs to spare the bomber's life. Bartender remembers telling John, what if he puts the man in front of him, who ruined his life? Would he kill him? And now, it has become full circle. Bartender shoots the bomber, and the bomber dies. The movie ends with Bartender staring at his uncommissioned time machine, implying that he will become, the Fizzle Bomber. Like, and subscribe, 
for more videos like this.